Good morning, everyone. This is Midnight Brands coming to you with Brett's prep and overall prep for Monday, September 19th. I do hope that everybody had a great weekend and is ready to get to it this week. Should be another kind of amazing week. It's a bunch of econ type of stuff this week with uh, FOMC on Wednesday, if I do recall correctly. So it should be some pretty interesting uh, ways to see setups this week. Really have to dig in and, and see how it all plays out and whatnot. Uh, this is out a little bit later than, than we would typically like. We were running a bunch of simulations and stuff this weekend, uh, doing some, some various things, so we just didn't get to uh, didn't get to run everything ahead of time like we would have liked. Uh, we will try to get in through things and go through it as quickly as possible to, uh, to highlight everything for y'all. So uh, just a gentle reminder as usual, we are not financial analysts, we are not financial advisors. Nothing we do say, um, talk about, believe anything is any kind of a buy or sell recommendation. This is all just for educational entertainment review purposes as well for ourselves to kind of walk through and, and get prepared going into the session ahead. And with that, also gentle reminder, we will dive right into it since we are behind a little bit. Uh, we'll pick up as usual a handful of things out of breadth and overall probably go through these a bit quicker than usual and uh, getting right into it is SPXS. Nice little big zone up there at the highs at 25 to 2468. Uh, obviously SPY, ES, etc. Are, are gapping down. Opened up a little bit into uh, into the futures last night and didn't hold at all and just really kind of uh i don't think actually it opened above friday's highs i think it kind of held there for a little bit and it's just been uh kind of slow steady, steady trickling ever since so spxs tracks the inverse of spy so if spy is going down this thing's going up and this is a much bigger zone which the fact that it's red tells me we're getting into some symmetrical extremes which you can see here uh, in the bottom section the 20 day and 50 day EMA, I can see that those are definitely starting to get up towards the average uh, sell side symmetrical extremes. And so that is a, a pretty good indication of, of what's going on there. Moving on next is ERX. ERX has two zones in its uh, mix for today. And uh, from looking at these before, I mean, I actually would say it didn't take this off before, but to me, this ABCD. Potential is no longer valid. Oils sold off uh, quite a bit last night. Uh, I was telling uh, somebody already this morning, I'm kind of pissed at myself. The uh, algo stuff we were working on suggested a short, took it, and then cover before I went to bed and left uh, a little over 300 points ticks uh, on the table from 85.36, and it was down to like 82, 70, or 60, or some junk like that. But anywho, uh, you got to do what you got to do to, to uh, go to sleep better and, and be set up for the right mentality coming into the day. So that's all right. You know, wait, find the next setup. And if you're looking across multiple instruments, then there's always going to be something. You don't need to force things. And so uh, ERX has two zones here for tomorrow, really close to each other. Uh, first one is probably the more interesting, at least to, to me, if we were to do something, right? Because it's got the... Swing AV wap there and the 20 day in, in gap fill. So pretty pretty interesting to me on that ERX one. Of course, just above it, you've got this uh, this other zone here. In fact, this is actually the bigger zone looking at it, right? With 57, 57, 57, 16. So this would be kind of the bigger one. This one's getting pulled because of the, it's, because of the look set up in there. So two, two nice zones. Uh, this would probably be the bigger one. Uh, kind of doubtful in my mind at least that we'd see that with one how oil's been uh, fading already but uh, who knows gotta watch gotta see see how it all plays out uh, we'll look at amgen next it had a pretty nasty sell-off the other day i mean massive gap down from that 248 level and uh came all the way down to that 240 and then uh, i mean it just continued to sell off what's interesting on it is it continued to dance around here and so you've got uh this kind of nice bigger zone here towards the lows, uh, towards the supply and demand area. Uh, be getting back down towards some buy side symmetrical extremes, which you can see we did that here kind of middle ish last week. 
and then the other zone is up here at the highs with the supply and demand uh, you've got a swing and a daily anchor VWAP up there at that 234 ish level so pretty interesting on on that one uh, we'll move next to Sark Sark tracks the inverse of arc K if, if you aren't familiar with that particular one and uh, this one is really surprising how it kind of held that uh, that 200 day SMA in there, and uh, it's been it had been for a while trying to hold this kind of IPO uh, AV WAP there. It's not normally one that I track, but somebody else pointed it out and just kind of threw it on the screen for shits and grins to see how it played out. Um, but in any event, uh, Sark's bigger zone is down here at the lows, 5298 to 52.63 so pretty nice to me uh, at least in my eyes on, on that one and how that one's setting up there so um, yeah looks looks good for that you got the gap fill in there you got the 200 day below that so definitely one to to watch going back over to the energy side again real quick you've got gush gush has two zones and it's mixed at the 167.05 to 166.10 so a little bit bigger of a zone if you think about it uh, just from a pure numbers perspective but then when you look here and you see like yesterday had a $15 move and its average ADRs really is up there at that uh, about $10 price point mark so um, pretty interesting on on these two zones here really so the bigger one again is gonna be up there and then the next one is at 164 um, and I actually drug this down because I would think about this gap fill as kind of a div to collect where you'd come up here and, and grab that. So, um, yeah. Next up on the list is SVIXI. SVIXI is uh, tracking the opposite of the VIX. So keep an eye on and, and see how that one plays out. Uh, but SVIXI has uh it's got the one zone at 5380 to 5370. So super, super tight. Um, area on that one it's up there at the highs uh, based upon the fact that we're gapping down I would expect that uh, we're probably not going to see that one hit at all today uh, but you never know I mean anything can happen and so just keep an eye on how that uh, how that all plays out and then we'll close off here by looking at Tesla to see what all it's got in its mix and we're turn off the squawk there so uh, for Tesla, it's nice bigger zone is, is down here at the lows. It's off by, looks like a little bit about four bucks from Friday's close here. And so it's bigger zone is, is down here at the lows. And for whatever reason, the, the EMAs and stuff aren't, aren't showing up on mine for some reason here on, on Tesla. I don't know why that is, but in any event, the there's EMAs in this uh, kind of zone here. You got the 291. So you, you can see you've got, looks like the 200 day SMA and you've got the 20 day uh, EMA in that 293 to 292 ish level. So really interesting. The other part is this indicator again that we've been working on. We've talked about a few times. The thing about these is kind of uh, bumper rails uh, for bowling, but in this case they're for stocks and, and they're there to give us an idea about where market makers are trying to to keep things in line for the day or for the week so and for the week i mean they can re-hedge and move things around so the week are the the pink dots the green and yellow we're still experimenting and working through to find the right setup and uh most times are pretty damn close to each other but in any event the, uh, the thing that was interesting to me on this one is those two are right on top of each other and they're just above kind of that bigger zone there. So you know, maybe we see something where we come in and uh, we, we come down to collect this stuff, but then we, we make sure that we close above. Uh, again, nothing recommendation buy, sell, any of that kind of stuff. It's just an interesting point to keep an eye out on and something we'll definitely be watching because the move or the... the impact that Tesla has in terms of the market stuff there. So we will pause real quick and we'll flip things over to set up to look at some of the overall review stuff for the day. 
A uh, handful of things in here we won't hit on a lot. Again, know that it's coming a little bit later than usual. So we will take this opportunity to try to go through some of these quickly as well. First up, one up on the list is going to be Canadian Solar. And Canadian Solar was the highest scoring, which, by the way, in case we haven't ever mentioned, these are all ordered by the score in, uh, in kind of the quality not quantity, but quality of the evidence pointed out in each of these each of these zones that are captured here. And so Canadian Solar's bigger zone is, is up here at the highs. You got a D look type of setup on this one where you've got the EMA combined with a daily or swing anchor VWAP. And so really kind of bigger, interesting zone up there at the highs and how it's set up. BMW Y, and give me one quick second, folks, while that draws. They're here. All right, that should all be nicely drawn now. And so BMY is 7236 to 7214. And so that's a kind of a nice one there. It's got the swing, a, excuse me, swing and daily anchor VWAP up here with 50 day EMA. So pretty nice on that one and uh, I guess we'll hit on ADM uh, Archer Daniel Midland next and see kind of where that one all fits out and how that one is looking so ADM is bigger zone we adjusted this one before from looking at it um, it was it was going up a little bit higher and we said you know if we were watching this one and trading it we'd probably just be watching for that area it does also have this zone down here at the lows, so definitely be one. It's kind of a nice kind of boundary area to be paying attention to and, and making that decision on what or how you're going to take a trade on one of those. So moving next down on the list is PXD, Pioneer Natural Resources. Uh, PXD, Papa X-Ray Delta, has again those two uh, really, really close to each other and uh, like what what you could probably do really on this especially since it had almost a ten nine and a half buck move the other day just collapse that into into a bigger zone and watch it that way I mean, that if if we were trading this today that's probably how we would treat that is just treat this as kind of one bigger zone as opposed to two smaller zones and then we're going to look real quick at Schlumberger, SLB, and then maybe we'll take a look at, uh, at DVN. Um, there's obviously all these other ones in there, but uh, again, trying to keep it tight on time today. And so SLB, Schlumberger has got uh, two, two levels on it. Again, I kind of like these ones where, I mean, it's got these bigger zones that are you know kind of you know on the outside versus sometimes we'll see them you know at trend strength reference point kind of in the middle and it's just kind of meh because um, then you can get an idea you can watch and you know if you miss then you okay just wait wait and watch it come back down you know maybe you div below a little bit maybe there's another piece of evidence in here maybe it wants to go fill some of these wicks you know and you can wait until you get to this uh, ADR area gap fill but having them on the outsides is kind of nice. It's much easier to play on the outsides and shoot for some of that, uh, some of just the way that plays out, right? Playing on the outsides, it's a lot easier than trying to play with the chop in the middle. So uh, it's also interesting how this one's been trying to hold that transfer trend line here. And so in any event, that's uh, Slumber Shade there. You got two levels up at 4011 to 3987, and then way down below at 3764 to 3747 and then last up is just going to be Devon Energy uh, which also has two zones in it I don't remember what these looked like here from skimming through earlier uh, so first one is up there at almost 69 to 68.50 and then the other one is down below at 65.42 to uh, might as well just call it 65 64.96 so First one interesting that you've got that swing AV WAP in there as well as the 20 day EMA. So again, you're kind of setting up for the look type of opportunity. And then down here, you've got, got it at the lows and you can see just, again, those 
those arrows give us a really good indication. You see, I just drew these on here. Um, sometimes the arrows are, we take a look and see if we need to draw a five minute or 30 minute. So sometimes you ever see me draw these, the arrows might be off a little bit from where this draws because uh, we track five minute swing AV wops automatically as well as 30 minute swing AV wops automatically. And then in addition, we're also looking for the daily and weekly AV wops. So in any event, I think that gets us through all of them. Uh, as always, folks, if you got any questions, any comments, um, let us know. We did also put out a video this weekend. If you didn't see it, uh, we released that there actually on Saturday, yeah, Saturday morning. We, uh, we published a demo video that showed uh, our new feature actually, which allows us to save Ninja charts. So we could save this chart tab or we could save the chart window. So pretty nice feature. Obviously we are biased of oh, just a tad bit in uh, in what we do there but pretty nice feature with being able to you know save a chart you know if you want to share that with somebody uh, hell if you want to just be prepared and have things off on the side so that you've got them for you know backup purposes and and whatever else so I just click the button so I could re-enable that here on my screen at least I hope I did yeah there it is um, so nice little feature there you can uh you can save them load them and and kind of have it all set up so again hope everybody had a great weekend hope that everybody's getting ready for a nice week whether it's here uh, partially here and working on day job things etc and so with that we will call it an end and uh good luck everyone bye now